When Sony first unveiled the PlayStation Classic, I was pretty excited for the system. I think a lot of people were. It's always nice to have plug and play systems to play these classic retro games on your HD television. Coming in with 20 games, two controllers at a $100 price point at the start of December, a lot of people were anticipating what the rest of the lineup of the PlayStation Classic would entail. We got a few games when the system was first unveiled, such as Tekken 3 and Final Fantasy 7, but I think a lot of people were wondering what the other games were going to be involved with the system. Well, today we got a full list of games for the PlayStation Classic, and while it's pretty good, I definitely think that some big games are missing, and there's some interesting additions into this PlayStation Classic that honestly just kind of have me scratching my head. So what are the 20 games that are coming to the PlayStation Classic, and more importantly, what are the games that I feel that are missing from the system? That's what we're going to talk about in this video. So sit back, relax, make sure you subscribe to the channel, and let's talk about the PlayStation Classic. Hey, RGT85, hey Sean. Oh my god, it's Stevie Richards! All right, so like I said, the 20 games that will be available on the PlayStation Classic have been fully revealed. So we're gonna talk about these 20 games very briefly, just go over them, what sort of games they are. And then we're gonna talk about what I feel is missing from this lineup. So starting things off, you have Battle Arena Toshinden, which is a one-on-one -on -one 3D fighter that came out very early in the PlayStation's life cycle. Cool Borders 2 is another game, a snowboarding game. Destruction Derby, which is a car racing crash em up game. Final Fantasy VII, of course, one of the iconic RPGs on the original PlayStation. Grand Theft Auto, the original Grand Theft Auto will be appearing on the PlayStation Classic. Definitely very different from the Grand Theft Autos we know today, but it'll be interesting to see the history of that game. Intelligent Cube, which is considered by many to be a hidden gem on the original PlayStation. A really solid game, a fun puzzle game, and one of the additions that I'm very happy to see on the PlayStation Classic, because I definitely haven't played this game enough, and I really want to play it some more. Of course, Jumping Flash was initially unveiled during the original PlayStation Classic launch, or the launch, the reveal of this system, so we definitely know that Jumping Flash was already on the system. Metal Gear Solid. Now, I'm definitely very happy to see Metal Gear Solid on here. It's arguably one of my favorite PlayStation 1 games, a definitely a game that sort of defined the system. It's one of the highest rated games on the platform as well, and just a fantastic game. Of course, there was Twin Snakes on the GameCube, but I love the original Metal Gear Solid, so I'm definitely very excited to see that on there. Now, this game is kind of strange. Mr. Driller. This is a puzzle-based game. I guess they're going for a bit of variety on the system. They want to have a good variety of different games, but I never really knew many people to love Mr. Driller so much, but that's interesting to see. Oddworld Abe's Odyssey. Now, this was a 2D platforming game. Definitely a very beautiful art style that still looks good today, so I'm happy to see that on there. The original Rayman will also be on there. Resident Evil Director's Cut. Now, that's very good to see because this is an M-rated title. A lot of people were concerned that the PlayStation Classic would shy away from games like Metal Gear Solid and Resident Evil because of the M rating on it, which would then give that system an M rating. But it looks like PlayStation just said, screw it, we're going to do it anyways. So definitely happy to see Resident Evil Director's Cut on there. Revelations Persona, the original Persona game on the PlayStation 1. I know a lot of people are excited to see that game on there. Not many people were expecting that to be on this list, so that's a good thing to see. We also have Ridge Racer Type 4, which we knew about from the initial unveiling of the PlayStation Classic. Super Puzzle Fighter. 2 Turbo, another sort of interesting game that is on this lineup of games. The original Siphon Filter, which is a really fun game. I don't really like the way Gabe runs in the game, but I love the original Siphon Filter trilogy on the PlayStation, so definitely happy to see that on there. Tekken 3, which was another game that we knew was going to be on the system. Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six, Twisted Metal, and of course, Wild Arms. So those are the 20 games. Looking over this list, there's definitely some games that I feel could have been replaced with something else. Before before we get into the games I just feel are completely missing. A game like Battle Arena Toshinden. Now, that game wasn't really all that great when it initially came out. I remember it getting somewhat mediocre reviews, and I feel like there's other 3D-based fighters on the PlayStation 1 that would have been a better fit. Something like Soul Blade, which of course was the predecessor to the Soul Calibur series, or 
even Bushido Blade, which was sort of a different take on a 3D fighter where you could actually kill someone in just one shot. So I feel like those games may have been a bit more impactful on here. Something like Cool Borders 2 is admittedly kind of cool, no pun intended, but I feel like those games haven't really held up all that well over time. Uh, Mr. Driller is definitely an interesting addition to the game to the system along with Super Puzzle Fighter 2 Turbo. Um, obviously they wanted to have some sort of puzzle games on there. This is a variety system to sort of bring in a bunch of other people into the platform. Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six, uh, that game, you know, once again, that was a great PC game. It was definitely very good on the Dreamcast as well, but I feel like the original PlayStation version just really wasn't all that great. But overall, I think the list is pretty decent. I'm definitely happy to see games like Metal Gear Solid, the original Resident Evil, Twisted Metal, things like that. But there's definitely some big glaring omissions on this list that we need to talk about because I feel like that there could have been better choices added to this lineup of games. First up, some of the biggest games that are missing in action are, of course, the Crash Bandicoot series and the Spyro series. A lot of people assimilate Crash Bandicoot with the original PlayStation. It was in the marketing for the original PlayStation. Crash Bandicoot went to Nintendo headquarters and was calling out Mario on a megaphone. So I'm definitely puzzled as to why there is no Crash Bandicoot and there is no Spyro on this system. Now, I know what you're saying to yourself. Well, RGT, they just came out with the Crash Insane trilogy a year ago. It just released on other systems over the summer. And of course, the Spyro remasters are coming out as well. And you are completely right in thinking that way. But the thing about the PlayStation Classic is these classic systems aren't necessarily for the hardcore collector. Sure, a lot of hardcore collectors end up buying them, but it's more of an impulse buy system. It's more to get people who maybe have played the original PlayStation growing up that don't play games anymore and they want to revisit games that they played when they were a kid. So not having Crash Bandicoot and not having Spyro is a really big omission in my opinion. I don't really understand the thought process as to why those games aren't on here. Another game I feel that is definitely missing is the original Tomb Raider. That was another game that was absolutely fantastic on the original PlayStation. Yes, it hasn't aged all that well, but really a lot of these games haven't aged all that well. There's definitely a lot of nostalgia going into these games. A game like the original Resident Evil definitely looks very rough around the edges and is very clunky in how you play it, but that doesn't mean that you still can't have fun playing it. So the omission of the original Tomb Raider on here is definitely very puzzling to me. That was a game that of course released on the PlayStation and the Sega Saturn, but it definitely sort of, you know, tied in more so with the PlayStation brand. All the sequels ended up coming out on the PlayStation and skipping the Sega Saturn. So growing up, when you thought of Tomb Raider, you definitely thought of the PlayStation more so than the Sega Saturn. Obviously games like Ape Escape would not be on the system as well since they went with a non-DualShock controller, which I'm perfectly fine with, honestly. I understand that was a cost-cutting measure, so I'm okay with that, but there's definitely some other omissions on here as well. A game that I think would have done really well is the Wipeout series. Now, Wipeout, of course, was a futuristic racing game that was sort of like F-Zero, but it was really fast and it was really polished, and once again, this was a multi-platform release. It came out on the original PlayStation, it came out on the Sega Saturn, and it also came out on the N64, but the PlayStation version was the best version, and once again, all of the sequels ended up on the PlayStation system. Wipeout was another franchise that I think a lot of people associated with the PlayStation brand more so than any other brand. Another huge omission on here is Castlevania Symphony of the Night. Once again, I know that a collection just came out for the PS4, but this system is not necessarily for PS4 owners. This is supposed to be an all-in-one sort of system that brings you back to the original PlayStation days, that brings you back to that nostalgia when you were growing up playing the original PlayStation. Castlevania Symphony of the Night is arguably one of the best games on the original PlayStation. And to not be included in this lineup of games is definitely a very strange omission. But of course, one of the big things is just the lack of Square games and RPGs in general. Sure, there's games like Final Fantasy VII and Wild Arms on here. Obviously, Final Fantasy VII was a big get for the system, but there's so many classic original PlayStation RPGs out there. Games like Chrono Cross, games like Legend of Dragoon. It's just sort of strange to see those games not on this system as well. Of course, they could always do different versions of the original PlayStation Classic. They could release another version in six months to a year that has more RPGs on here, that has other things on here, that maybe has 2D fighters on here. Although the PlayStation 1 wasn't really known for 2D fighters, it's definitely strange to see no 2D fighters on this list whatsoever. I definitely don't think that this list is bad. I just definitely think that they missed some key games. I think they should have focused more on games that were assimilated with the original PlayStation. Games like Mr. Driller and Rayman and stuff like that. Solid games. But do you really think of those titles when you think of the PlayStation? I think you more think of things 
like Crash Bandicoot. I think you think of more things like Wipeout, and of course Castlevania Symphony of the Night, all of the great Square RPGs from that era. It's definitely not a bad list. It's not going to make me cancel my pre-order or anything. I'm definitely still going to pick one up and review it on the channel. I definitely don't think it's a bad list, though. I just think some of these games, games like Tomb Raider, Crash Bandicoot, should have been a priority over games like the original Grand Theft Auto. While a fantastic game, I don't think many people have that much nostalgia for the original Grand Theft Auto when compared to something like Grand Theft Auto 3. But once again, those are the 20 games that are going to be available on the PlayStation Classic. Let me know in the comments section down below what games you feel are missing from this lineup. Are you happy with this lineup? Are you a bit disappointed? I've definitely seen some mixed reactions online so far, with some people being a bit disappointed that there's not more Square RPGs on here, and some of the games like Crash Bandicoot and Spyro are missing. So let me know in the comments section down below what you think of the list and if you plan on picking one up. And as always, thank you for checking out this video. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications. And as always, I will catch you guys on the next one. Later.